Well, while we're waiting for everyone to come in, I'm going to do a small introduction. Hi, my name is Maggie. I am a uh, designer and communications associate here at Quilling Card. I'm here to teach you how to make red poppies today, one of our popular design kits, DIY, sorry, DIY kits. Um, with me today for National Quilling Day, happy National Quilling Day, everybody, by the way. With me today, I have our team from Quilling Card, our um, Framingham office here at the end of the table, quilling with me. Everyone say hi, please wave. Hi, hi. Hello. 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 Happy National Quilling Day. <laughs> so we're all quilling here with you and we're very excited to have you join us. Thank you so much for spending some of your afternoon with us today. I'll wait until 2.05 and then I'll get this ball rolling and we'll start quilling. It doesn't matter if you have a kit with you or you don't or if you've never quilled before or you have, um, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Um, anything that you'd like to say, please let us know. We're reading everything that's being said. Um, and I'll try my best to answer your questions, whether or not they're technical ones or just ones about our cards, how we make them. I'm excited to spend this afternoon with you. So I think we can begin now. Um, I'm starting with the blank red poppies card. If you have a kit of your own, feel free to follow along. If you don't, um, feel free anyway to stop me and ask any questions along the way. I'm happy to answer them. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to quill the top of the flowers right here and this bit right over here. I'm using my quilling pen to point things out. I have my quilling pen with me right here. Whoop, there we go. I have a pair of clippers, scissors, anything will do. These are thread clippers, but we use them because they're very precise and good at cutting thin pieces of paper. And then I have my tweezers, which is good for precision detail work. Other than that, I have my glue with me, which I've spread thinly on a piece of plastic, you can spread your glue thinly on a piece of paper or wherever else helps you, but the thinner you spread it, the more easy it is to work with. I used another piece of plastic in order to scrape my glue flat. So, to begin with, you're gonna have a bunch of light colored red paper in your kit. That's different from the dark colored red paper. And you're gonna take the light colored ones and you're gonna want to take one third off of each of them. You're gonna be working with two thirds of the length of a strip. Thirds are a bit tricky to measure, but if you hold them kind of where you predict them to be and fold them in on themselves, you should be able to get an approximation of what a good third would look like if you pull the strands in and out from each other. Once you have some sort of basic approximation, doesn't need to be perfect, snip off one third and you're left with a two thirds strand. Feel free to use this as a template for your other strands if you don't want to keep measuring thirds every time. You can just hold the short length next to your subsequent strips and snip them where they need to be. So now that you have several two thirds strands right here, I'm gonna start quilling them. So I'm gonna take my quill pen and I'm going to, let's see if I can get this closer. I'm going to thread it through just like this in between the tines. Now I'm not gonna go all the way to the end like this because it's gonna fall right off. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of a tail. It can be anywhere between a, sixth, a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, just something that's not gonna make you lose the grip at the end on your piece of paper. Now you fold it over on itself just like this and then you can use your fingers to hold the paper in place. I tend to put the tip of the quilling pen against my thumb so that I can hold the paper and prevent it from sliding up and down the column. Then I just gently twist. And what you want the paper to do is you want it to stack upon itself. You don't want it to make a tunnel or a funnel or some tower or something. You want it to just be a nice even cylinder all the way across. And that's what these three fingers are doing for me. 
they're keeping this shape nice and flat like a disc. Otherwise, if you don't have it against your thumb, you run the chance of doing something like this and getting it running down the strand or all that stuff. This is what I like to call a carrot. Um, it's great for making other shapes, but not for making a beautifully quilled circle. So I'm gonna start again, this time with a proper strip. I'm gonna situate this against my thumb. Once again, leave a little bit of a tail, fold it over on itself. You can use a thimble on the thumb, yes, certainly. Um, this will prevent you from getting any unwanted um, circular shaped uh, paper cuts, which I've gotten before, or you know, to keep it from pressing against your thumb too strongly, definitely. I use a thimble if I use something sharper um, to quill with, or sometimes I use a needle to quill with, and definitely you want a thimble for that. So once I finished quilling, I took it off the pen, and it's still a flat disc right now, perfectly tightly coiled in my hands. Yes, Mary Jo. Um, so for someone who's never wanted to learn to do this before, first of all, be patient with yourself. Be kind. This is an art that takes uh, quite a while to learn. Our master art uh, quillers are, have been doing this for years and years and years. Um, so be patient with yourself. Um, and also understand that it's really something that takes a lot of practice to master. So you just have to make a bunch of shapes again and again and again until you start getting the hang of how to, here, let me bring this a lot closer, how to get all the different circles to be concentric the way you want them, to not have a tiny circle and a big circle. Um, I just let this basically spring loose in my fingers and then I use the tweezers to squeeze it together. And now that I've done that, I just wanna make a little bit of a sharp tip on one side. That's gonna be for the top of our flower stem. I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna pinch the other end, and now I'm left with a shape that looks like this. Now this is one of our more advanced kits, Mary Jo, so the fact that you're watching this and trying to, I wouldn't recommend learning with this kit being the first one, but certainly I wanted to show this because it showcases a lot of techniques and a lot of different styles and different shapes, which makes this card very interesting to quill. So now that I have a piece like this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently dip it in the glue right here, using my tweezers so I can lay it flat and it doesn't pick up a lot of glue. You can dip it on the side just to make sure you get the excess glue off. And then I'm gonna put it right on my card using the white lines as guidance. So there we go, I put that right in the middle of the shape and now you can see that the card has its first petal. Now, if you're worried about this little end bit, sometimes people have this bit sticking, whoop, bit sticking out right here. And I've been using the glue on the bottom of the piece to hold it together. But if you don't manage to get that fully glued, I put a little bit of glue on the tip of my tweezers right there. You can see the white. And just put it right in between. Tweezers are your friend when it comes to quilling because you can get such precision using them when you can't use your fingers. So there's our first piece, and we're gonna keep making at least 12 more of these. We're gonna make three on this side, three more on this side, a few for these ones, and a few for these ones. I'm gonna movie magic it at some point and move on to another type of, of shape. But for now, we'll make this shape again so that everyone can be familiar with it. Once again, I'm gonna cut off a third using my guide right here. Thank you, Mary, that's really nice to say. Lovely to know that you like our cards. I think they're gorgeous as well. There we go. Once again, I'm gonna spin. This time I'm spinning counterclockwise. You can spin whichever direction you want to that's easier. Using my fingers to hold the piece flat. There we go. Try not to spin too quickly if you're starting on this. It's easier to get it out of hand if you're trying to do it quickly. Slow and steady so you learn the right techniques and then you can slowly get that faster. So here it is. I let it go in between my fingers so it just uncoils naturally. 
There we go. I'm going to use my tweezers to pinch this shape from the sides. I get something. Whoop. There we go. Just like that. And I'm going to once again flatten one end a little bit, give it a pinch, hold it, pinch the other end, and there you have it, another petal shape. We're going to dip it again in the, in the glue. And we're going to put it right on the card, right next to the other one. Now, if you ever don't like where you've placed something, you can always shift it after you've placed it down. You can always use your tweezers to squish it, make sure the shapes are exactly where you want them to be. It's harder while I'm holding it up because there's no flat table to push it against. But the pieces of paper are still very malleable until the glue dries. So to get those tight corners, like perhaps this one, this shape fitting right against this shape, you might want to put it down first, then align them. There we go. Use a little pressure with my fingers and voila, another piece. Now I'm going to do one more piece and then I'm going to move on to the next shape. I want to hold every one for me making 13 and 12 or 13 of these. So there we go. I cut one more. I'm going to do it faster this time. There we go. Once again, we have a complete disc. Tuck in the tail. Let it go on your fingers. It should uncurl naturally. And you can stop it at any point. The longer you hold it in a curly, curled tight position, the tighter your circles are going to be once it lets go in your fingers. Once again, I lay it flat. Give a little bit of squeeze at the tip. Squeeze the end of it. I have another petal piece. There we go. So I would keep using my tweezers to tuck this in at the top and keep going all along the top of the flower's edge until I have all these two-thirds length shapes filled in. What that looks like is this. So I've gone in and these shapes are all, you can see the exact kind of similar look to them. This one's a teardrop at the end to anchor the end. This one's another teardrop shape, which means you just don't have to pinch the end that much. And this one's a little tiny little hook that I use the tweezers to shape against this once I put it down. These are also the same shapes up here. And so is this one. I put a little green here as that's the design on our card itself. You can keep it red if you'd like, but the little green touch brings out the, the leaf and the stem. This is dark red. It's another two thirds shape, just as we've been doing before. But once you're finished with making those two thirds length shapes, this is what it would look like. The last thing I want to point out is some shapes you may look at and you may think it's very complicated. Like this one, this one's got a corner right around here. It's got another corner down here. It's got a corner over here. And this starts as a simple teardrop shape. And once you lay it down on the paper, you can use your tweezers to move it around like I've been talking about. And that really helps you form those angles tight against the other pieces. This is a much more advanced quilling thing. So don't worry about it if you're just starting out, Mary Jo. Um, you're just going to want to eventually, when you want, when you want to figure out how to fit tight shapes against each other, use your tweezers to really move them on paper rather than trying to shape the shape ahead of time before you put it down. So once we have this, we're going to start trying to use full length strips to make the bottom of the flowers, this section right here, the flowy pieces. I'm going to start with the darker red now. You can see the difference in red colors. This is the the 
darker red bunch, this is the lighter red bunch. We're gonna go with darker red right now, and we're gonna go full strip. Every shape generally begins with the circle, so we always quill into a circular shape, then go from there. Sometimes we have line work, which is just pieces of paper standing up, um, outlining things and things like that. But usually line, outside of line work, everything begins with a circle. If it ever gets too loose, this dropped from my fingers and you can see the, the shapes are just so loose right now. You can always just retighten it by pulling the ends and then just twirl it back up in your fingers. There we go. And now you have a tight shape again. Ooh, there we go. So I'm gonna once again use my tweezers to squeeze it flat. I'm gonna to wanna to lay it down here to see what, how it holds up lengthwise against the piece I need it to be. I think that's pretty okay. I'm gonna pinch one end. I'm gonna lay it down. Put in the glue. and then use the tweezers to shape it. Now I understand this might be moving a bit quickly because it's a demo rather than tutorial, but we do have a full YouTube video up of how to quill this exact card along with our other DIY kits, if you'd like to check that out. It's on our YouTube channel, at YouTube at Quilling Card, or you can go to the various DIY quilling kit pages on our website and on there will also be a link. Once again, letting it go in my fingers, letting it get relatively big. I'm gonna pinch it down. See what the size is compared to what we need. There we go. I'm gonna put in the glue, bring it back. And I'm just using the tweezers to pinch around. Now if you have a gap like this in your shape and you're unhappy with the distance between them, you can always, while, while it's drying, pull your paper around and get the, sh the different concentric circles to move within themselves and you can get the perfect flow and shape you want. You're gonna to wanna to keep going until you shape all the bottom petals here. Everything except the orange we're gonna be doing on this level. You can use the lighter colored paper strips or the darker colored paper strips. Um, the pattern has three dark ones right here and then the rest of them are light colored. And then there's two dark ones right here and then the rest of them are light colored but you can do them as much as in any color you'd like. Oh, is there a 404 error? Oh. 
Thank you for posting the correct link, Mary. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna let this one go apart. And then we're gonna squeeze. Feel free, as I said, to drop me any questions. If you have questions about techniques or how various cards are made, specific cards, non-specific questions, I'm just here to help and answer all your quilling needs today. This one, I think, is going to go right here. You can often just kind of push it against the shape and see how it'll form up before you put glue down. I'm going to pinch that little side in. So I'm going to lay it down, use my tweezers to slide that corner in closely. And then use my tweezers to slide this down here. You can see just how much we use tools, our, our, our tweezers as tools in, in quilling designs. It'd be impossible to make all these intricate shapes with a, such precision without using tweezers instead of fingers. We'll follow you on Instagram, yes. Um, it does take about an hour to craft our cards. Um, we have some quillers or master quillers are extremely fast and some of, the, some of them can craft certain cards in astounding amounts of time. Um, but I think that it could go from something that takes you days, as you said, Marlene, to something that takes you an hour with practice. Um, we're gonna go one more and then I'm going to move on to step two. Sorry, didn't realize I was angling that off screen. Now I'm quilling this by hand with a quilling pen, but at our uh, card workshops, um, our artisans quill with an electric quilling pen. And I forgot who asked about using thimbles. Was it you, Mary Jo? But um, I've, I have to say, I've used the electric quilling pens myself and they always leave a mark on my fingers because uh, of how fast they spin. And I've never thought about using thimbles for them before, but it's a great idea. Now, once you have other pieces glued down, you can see how naturally other pieces can slot in between. If I just slide this piece in and use the tweezers to help me guide it, the piece will just naturally form up right against the card, exactly into that slot. So this is how we layer things so that the, all the pieces push up right against each other and you get that seamless flow. So once you've quilled out the whole bottom section here and over here and around the edge of this petal, this flower, um, and this flower is bonus, by the way, in our instruction set, you're, it doesn't cover how to quill this one specifically. Um, it's a bonus flower that you can quill how you want to after you've already finished quilling the primary two, this one and this one, which we do have in the instruction set in the DIY kit. So once you've finished doing that, you're gonna end up with a card that looks like this. You're gonna have the two dark ones at the bottom, as I said, plus one lighter colored one on each side. Now these two are full strips. This one's a two thirds strip and that one's a two thirds strip. But you know, I wouldn't take these distances and lengths to heart just because everyone quills um, with a different tightness and a different concentricity of circles. Um, so you might, be, you might quill and find that a half a strip ends up being as big as my two-thirds strips or even my full strips. However, it ends up being, um, 
don't think that you're wrong just because the lengths you, you work with aren't the lengths that we recommend. Um, we just recommend them for how our quillers do it and the tightness that our quillers quill at. At the bottom, you can see that I have three dark shapes. Here we go. And I use that similar gap push technique where I just made these two pieces first, then I pushed this dark one right in there and it shaped perfectly to allow me that flow. Um, you don't always have to shape these shapes by hand and then lay them down exactly as they would. In fact, the more you use other shapes that are on the paper to help you shape new ones that you lay down, um, I think the more flowy and natural your quilling will look. And then you have this flower up here where we've laid down this full strip shape right over here and this full strip teardrop right over here. And now we're going to get down to doing some of the orange shapes. Um, which are some of the smaller, more complex ones. And then we'll do the stems and we'll do the center of the flower. I said this. Oh yes, can I show can I show you the glue tray again, please? Yeah. So the glue that I have is it's it's a it's a piece of plastic. Um, you can get this from Home Depot or anything. Um, just hard plastic. You can use any surface. I used to saran wrap a board, um, but here you go. Piece of plastic, and I use this other piece of plastic to basically lay down my glue and scrape it flat. And you can tell that there's not much glue upraised from the piece of plastic. Because when it comes out of the bottle, it comes out very, very you know, tall, and if you try to put your piece of quilling into that, it's going to gunk all around your fingers and your tweezers. So you really want to use another piece of paper or something to lay it flat. And then the nice thing about plastic, and the reason we use plastic, is because you can scrape off craft glue from this very easily once it dries. Um, I just use regular bottle of craft glue. Um, we do that in, at our uh, workshop in Vietnam as well. There's not a special kind of glue that we use. Um, most any piece of any type of type of glue you find for craft purposes will do. Um, there you go. And you're going to need, you know, if you spread it thinly, you're going to need to replenish your glue more often. So I wouldn't put a bunch of it out. Um, but you know, depending on how the speed that you work, you basically work through the amount of glue that you need. So I'm going to return to my card down here. Now we're going to start doing some of the oranges. So I have this lovely orange right over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make some half lengths now. Much simpler than making thirds. Just fold it in half, use my scissors to cut. Is anyone spending their National Quilling Day celebrating by anything else other than joining our stream? Again, really appreciate that you're here today, joining us today. Um, does anyone have plans to try to quill their own thing, send someone something quilled, do anything else to celebrate this holiday today? That's exactly correct, Doreen. There we go. Here's a small orange piece. And I just made a simple teardrop out of that. I'm going to be putting that right into this slot right here. I haven't gotten any glue on it yet, so I'm going to put some glue on the piece. And then we're going to put it right into the slot. There we go. Now if you want a piece, a, a type of glue that dries clear and doesn't interfere with other types of artwork, say, you know, when you use regular crafts glue, you, it dries clear and you try to crayon on top of it and it's not going to color properly, the best glue to use is probably perfect paper adhesive, P PPA glue. 
Um, you can find that on Amazon or at Michael's or Joann's, any craft store. But PPA glue dries perfectly clear, is extremely thin, and doesn't interfere with other types of artwork generally when you try to use multiple types of materials and media on the same work. Um, the paper is two millimeters wide. So you have, I'm talking, I assume you mean this distance right here, two millimeters. So oftentimes uh, when you buy paper in store, you're gonna find 10 millimeters or more. Um, you know, five, 10, eight millimeters is usually the, the more standard lengths, uh, widths. Um, we keep ours pretty thin. We cut ours ourselves in house um, because we try to make it mailable and it's gotta be a certain thinness in order to get through the mail. You can cut your own paper if you have a paper cutter or if you want to, you can buy packs of two millimeter thick paper as well, um, either on Amazon or at um, various quilling websites like quiltcreations.com, where you can pick types of paper as well as different thicknesses and different widths, um, things like that. Um, all right, so we're gonna keep going with little orange shapes all around. You know, what came to mind about your question, Mary Jo, a while ago about any advice for beginners, I would also say that it doesn't feel silly to go back to your basics. You might have to learn how to actually glue paper down in a new way. And you might say, well, I went to school and learned how to glue paper down for years. Um, quilling paper is different. It's, you know, a whole, it's thin, it's a different shape, it springs out at you and all that stuff. And so a lot of times when I teach this to people in person, we spend a lot of time just making circles. We spend a lot of time just dabbing a piece of glue on a on, uh, piece of paper into glue and just gluing it on a random piece of paper just to test it out, just to get the feel of it. Um, it takes more time than you think it does uh, to learn these things sometimes, and it's not embarrassing in the slightest or uh, you know bad to go back to basics and to actually work through those techniques. Um, yes, Alan, I am saying PPA glue, perfect paper adhesive. So I made this piece a bit too small, so we're gonna put this somewhere else entirely. I'm squishing this at the top to make a little T-shape. There it is. And I'm going to just put this T-shape right in here. So we're gonna put some glue. I'm gonna slide the shape in and then use the edge of my tweezers to really get that in there. This is what I mean by using your tweezers to sculpt as you go. There we go. And now we have a nice flat orange shape. I think I'm going to use two thirds for another one. I'm guesstimating distances now because as I made the rest of the flower, you know, there's the space remaining to fill in and I'd rather fill it in with the right shape and the right size of shape than to follow specific instructions and not exactly come out with the shape that I want. Um, there we go. We're gonna squish it again. Using your tweezers allows you to very, have a very even squish like that. I'm gonna pinch one side of it and I'll lay it down to test its length. There we go. Get some glue. Put it right on there. And use the tweezers once again to sculpt. There we go. One more orange piece. The paper, um, so Tete Macias asked, what is the weight of the paper? Um, and our paper ranges anywhere from um, 
80, 90 grams all the way to, uh, you know, up to 180, 186 grams, and that's for heavier line work. Um, so the paper I'm working with right now is about 90 to 115-ish, um, and the paper that I'm, I would use to do line work on our artwork is closer to 180. Um, but you can use paper anywhere from about 80-ish to 120-ish, and you'll be okay. Um, better to be consistent one direction. It's your direction. It's whichever direction you want to be, but uh, keep just, you know, the more you practice in one direction, the better and more confident you feel. So I would just pick one and just go with it, but it really doesn't matter. doesn't matter if you're doing it left-handed or right-handed either. Um, you're going to come out with a beautiful shape just the more you practice that exact motion. Um, I don't think that I can get ArtQuest PPA anymore. Um, I know what you're talking about, Doreen, and I do not think I've seen that. Um, so I, I do know they closed down recently. Um, I hope that she's enjoying her retirement. That's all I can say. Okay, so back to our card. We're, we're nearing completion. Um, obviously, I'm going through this faster than we would go through it if we were making a whole card ourselves. go. These are great questions. Keep them coming, please. another shape. Uh, this may also be too small for, I was hoping to fill this little block with it, but I think it might be too small after having put this piece in there. Uh, maybe. No, actually it fits pretty well. All right. That's why it's always nice to test your pieces before you do anything with them. Put it in, use the tweezers to sculpt, and now I have one more petal. I'm gonna make quickly make an interior, one of the flowers. I'm gonna pick this greenish yellow, and we're gonna do the middle of the bottom flower, then we'll be complete with that flower for now. And this one's just a tight coil. So I'm just going to spin it and spin it and spin it. I'm not actually sure I need a full length for this. No, full length is too big. I'm going to use a half length. Honestly, I find it very satisfying to watch quilling. Even, you know, quilling myself, it, it's just such a repetitive and relaxing motion and are such a repetitive and relaxing things to watch as you shape them, uncoil them, see the circle in your fingers, squeeze them tightly together, create the shape you want to. That's, I was distracted speaking with that, so that shape is also too big for me. You know, Marlene, we do it here, but we also find that it's pretty magic to us. Get to do magic every day. There we go. So once again, I'm gonna use my tweezers to test the size of the shape, fits perfectly. We're gonna get some glue at the end and we're gonna just dab that right down. Beautiful. There we go, we have completed the bottom flower. Now we still have our stems to do, and we still have the top flowers to do, so I'm gonna keep going as, I, as we speak. Please feel free to keep the questions coming. Any comments as well? Love to hear from you. Oop, there we go. Let 
Now, if you manage to make something, we would love to see you post it on our National Quilling Day event page. Um, you can find that on our Facebook page, Quilling Card. Um, and then under our Facebook page, you'll see that we host an event, and the event is National Quilling Day. That's today. Um, feel free to post a picture of what you made or your attempt at making the poppies card, if you're making poppies card, right on that page. We would love to see it um, and have you share with us your creations. There we go. There's the center of this one. We only have three more spots to put some orange in, and then we're basically done with this card, except the stems. I'll show you how to do the stems. The stems are a bit of line work. So the line work, usually we use heavier paper. So back to Tete Macias's question. The paper that I have right here is heavier. Um, now you can usually tell how heavy paper is by just laying it on your hand and letting it fall, and the heavier the paper is. Ooh, Adam, that's a tough question. I'm not sure there's a, ta there's, a, there's a shape that's hard or easy. I would say that the more you have to have corners and bend shapes around, the harder it gets. Do we have the holiday wreath card right now? No. Like happy holidays. I'm asking my colleague to pick up a card so I can show you. Um, uh, yes, Doreen. So our, our tools, we're, in, we're making new kits, and our new kits will have different tools. But these ones are the ones we actually use in-house. And they are the ends of needles put straight into a piece of wood. Now, what I mean by a harder shape is if you look at this card, you know, we're trying to make a four-pointed, uh, sorry, six-pointed holly leaf. Um, one point here, one point there, one point there, 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 and there. And the more pinches you're trying to do from a shape, the more exact you're trying to make it, the harder it becomes. Now, a teardrop is pretty simple. You're just taking a teardrop, and you're just bending it like this. A circle is pretty simple. But the more corners and edges you try to have, the harder it becomes for precision. Um. <laughs> I just saw your comment, Adam. Yeah, it's true. These shapes are hard, but they're really fun. Um, you know, circles are the easiest ones. Obviously, they're just very small, followed by teardrops and kind of uh, double-sided teardrops or eye shapes like that. Um, and then the more points and corners you have, just the harder it becomes as a shape in general. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start doing some line work. So this paper is heavier because it's meant to stand up on it and support its own weight without that much curling around. Um, if you want to make your paper thicker, you can always just fold it in half and glue along the middle. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm folding this in half. And I'm just going to dip it in my glue and move it so that I, and then just glue it together. Um, Mary, I did work on Starry Night. In fact, a lot of the team that's sitting with me right now uh, worked on Starry Night. It's been a big endeavor, and we're very proud of it. Um, you know, we, uh, it, it's a lot of, a lot of the behind the scenes process wasn't even shown on our um, social media, but, you know, the process of getting the artwork initially and making it into a recognizable vector that we could quill from, um, you know, it's kind of impossible to look at a painting and then just say quill that. So we, you know, the process of making the painting into the shapes behind them that it needed to be, and then to pick the right colors. Um, you know, we had to standardize the colors across our paper strips so that our paper strips, um, we quilled one square at a time. So if you quilled, uh, if you didn't match the colors, then the edges of, the, of each square would just be completely different blues or something if you left it into interpre to interpretation. So we spent a lot of time picking the right Pantone swatches for our Starry Night and making sure that the edges matched up and that they weren't visible, um, you know, differentiating themselves from each other as squares. We were trying to make it look not tiled as much as possible. Um, yeah, I, I personally worked on the, you know, more artwork portion of it at the beginning. I didn't quill any of it. That's um, a huge lift by our Vietnam team. They, you know, more than 300 quillers, um, you know, worked on that process, um, and they did an amazing job. 
12, about averaging 12 hours um, a square. That's you know about 12 hours a person. So it's um, yeah. Marlene, yes. So uh, we're currently trying to um, we have plans to display Starry Night right now at the Museum um, Store Association conference that's coming up. Um, I think next week or two weeks from now, and we will be displaying it there before and hoping that one of the museum um, folks at the conference will want to pick it up and display it at their museum, at which point, you know, any, any point of display for the public that we can come up with, we'll be letting um, everyone know through our mailing list, uh, any exciting news where people can go see it in person. Currently, um, it's sitting in pieces in our warehouse, ready to be uh, put together for this co uh, conference coming up. Um, they're in individual squares, and we're very excited for the chance to first display it in the United States over here um, in Boston two weeks from now. Um, and we'll, we will be releasing um, an artwork version of the Starry Night Quilled. It's going to be a smaller Starry Night, it'll be quilled uh, fully, um, very beautiful, and it's gonna be an artwork card. It'll be framed, it's gonna be um, different than the usual cards we have, just because there's a lot more quilling involved with that one. It takes you know four times as much um, manpower to quill the card that we're making for Starry Night. Um, and so the price is gonna be a little bit higher than you're uh, used to, but it's really well worth it. It's, it's my favorite production that we've done so far, and I can't wait for it to come out. So I'm gonna go back to line work. And I've, I've glued this against itself, so now it's doubly thick. Um, and you can glue as many times as you need to, to to get the thickness you want, but the thicker it is, the more easy it is to work with. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lay it down, and you can see the length that you need it to be, and you just snip. Now I'm gonna just use my tweezers, stand it up on the side, and dip it in the glue. And then we're gonna just put it right along, follow the edge. And we have stem number one. I don't know if that's, there we go. And it's coming slightly off at the end, so I'm gonna put, push this back down. There we go. I'm keep running with these, keep snipping them. Now, some, some of our cards, some cool effects you'll see some of our cards is that they, we snip the ends of these to make them look more sleek. So what you can do is take this and cut diagonally right at the end and now you have this curvature right down to the bottom and it makes it look like it's coming right out of the card. If you pay attention a lot of our cards have that sort of cut um, selectively here and there to really show motion. Um, it's particularly visible I forget in which in our new runner card that's coming out um, in uh, our beta fish card that's eventually coming out. Um, so just a little fun tidbit for you, a design tidbit for you to notice in our cards. You know, we really think about how paper stands even and where things can be cut and shaped in a more beautiful and suggestive way. Um, when will these cards be available for purchase? Um, yeah, so the cards will be available in the coming months. Um, they will probably be here in the fall. We have an anniversary card as well. I mean, this year is huge for us. It's our 10th anniversary, um, and we are you know, celebrating it by you know, two world records. That's massive um, and very exciting. You know, National Quilling Day, the first of many, we hope. Um, doing live demos like this, giveaways of various sorts. Um, and you know what, actually speaking of giveaways, um, I promised that to anyone who came by today that you would get a um, discount code for 20% off the store, any item you would like. Um, and that code is, well, I wish I could type it up on the screen, um, but that code is uh, 
just to make sure I get it right. Well, Quilling day 20. Quilling day 20. Um, so that's all caps or lower caps is fine. Quilling day 20, no spaces at all. Um, that's 20% off for the next 48 hours, um, your cart. So feel free to pick out anything you'd like. We're still doing 50% off um, the DIY kits as well. Um, so please come and get, you know, try your hand out those. Uh, we have new DIY kits coming in. You know, this is a reminder to anyone who got our free poppies kit who might be quilling with us today um, that if you quill something and you put it up, uh, sh you know, come to this live um, and you quill something and put it up on the National Quilling Day um, Facebook page, you'll get a chance to enter um, our giveaway for 10 new DIY kits that we're releasing. 